Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Jim Rugg, and today I'm going to ink a page of Rob Liefeld's pencils from the upcoming G.I. Joe Snake Eyes issue number five. Uh, a lot of different cartoonists are contributing inks to this issue, so pretty excited to dive into this, and I'll talk a little bit about my choices in, in uh, how I approach inking this page in a minute. But first, uh, plugs. Ed Piscor's Red Room, Murder and Mayhem on the Dark Web for Fun and Profits. Ed's next big comics project is Red Room, the launch of a monthly black and white outlaw comic uh, in the tradition of all of the splatterpunk and violent outlaw comics that we have looked at on this show. Um, that is what Ed has been working on for the past year. It's been incredible to watch him put this book together. I think it's some of the strongest comics um, I've seen anybody making, and it's a pretty exciting entry into this area of outlaw comics, of splatterpunk, of a lot of comics that... Um, we don't see very many today, so it's it's pretty exciting to see the direction he's going with this. You can pre-order that at your local comic shops now. Again, the books come out in May. Orders are due now. You can also pre-order it online from Fanagraphics, the book's publisher, and you can find links to pre-order the book under this video uh, in Ed Pisker's link tree. If you can't wait until May and you want to look at Red Room Comics now, you can join Ed's Patreon at patreon.com slash edpiscor, where he posts a couple of pages every week on Tuesday. Uh, three bucks will get you the archive. I think two complete issues are now available on his Patreon, so you can be an early adopter. You can uh, start having nightmares now. You don't have to wait until May. But uh, for anybody that wants the print editions, you can start pre-ordering those now wherever you buy comics. You can join my Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug. Uh, I post a lot of my out-of-print zines and comics, and this month I am posting my notebook drawings catalog from my 2011-2012 I Am 8-Bit show called Super Nerd. This is a collection of notebook drawings that I have made with ballpoint pens uh, from 2011-2012. The ballpoint pens is something I enjoy working with, get a pretty good response online. This is the catalog from that first solo show. We only made, I think, 300 of these. It's a very limited uh, print edition that I did with Ad House Books, my frequent publishing partner. And uh, because this has been out of print, I have decided to offer it to patrons. So um, you can get this at any membership on my Patreon, and you can find that at patreon.com slash jimrug. You can see um, uh, centerfolds, there are a couple of those that I put together for this issue. A lot of standalone single images, a couple of um, two-page spreads. So you can get this whole PDF at a high resolution on patreon.com slash jimrug, and that is available as of now. All right, so the reason we're here is to watch me ink this Rob Liefeld page. Uh, the first thing that you'll note is this is a blue line printout. It's 11 by 17 paper, a relatively standard comic book size, if there is such a thing anymore. So uh, Rob sent me these pencils as a high-res TIFF scan, and, uh, and I printed them out on blue line from his files. So the first thing I do is look at this page, think about what I'm trying to do with the inks. Um, I think of Rob Liefeld's art as being extremely dynamic, so that's something I want to preserve. You can see some of that in these action shots, like fight scenes, um, Snake Eyes bouncing back from that big crowd that was overwhelming him and, and kind of throwing them all off. I'm going to do a little bit of extra stuff in this panel. One of my plans is to add some motion lines radiating out from Snake Eyes to emphasize that motion. Um, the other things that I look at on this page are the Snake Eyes post throwing off all of the foot soldiers, to me, this is this is a really cool shot, and I'm going to kind of build my page around around this image. Um, the borders are fairly loose in their definition, so that'll be the first thing that I ink. That's usually how I work on my own pages. You know, I start with borders. If I'm um, lettering on my page, I'll do lettering and borders. Basically, the um, I'm going to say meta elements. That's probably not the perfect term for them, but it's these uh, the first couple of things that I ink whenever I'm doing my own work, and I'm going to do the same thing here. After that, I'm probably going to go in with a brush 
and apply some of the um, stronger lines, the heavier lines, some of the shading, uh, spot blacks, things of that nature. And then I'm going to come back in with a Japanese pen nib to do some of the, uh, the finer work. And it's possible that I'll go back and forth between that brush and the pen nib. Um, but I tend to start with you know the elements that I think are most important on a page. So in this case, I'm probably going to begin around this, this area and uh, I may add a little bit of blue line drawing just to clarify some of my details like when I talk about adding some motion lines to this and uh, you'll see what I mean as, as we go through this process. So without further ado, let's begin inking Rob Liefeld's Snake Eyes. Another choice that I'm making is I'm going to make this panel bleed off of this edge. Uh, there's a very light border there, but that's an easy enough thing to add if, you know, if Rob sees this finished page and decides that he wants this to be a clean border. That's something that's pretty easy to add digitally. You know, you can always um, fill in white or uh, erase anything that falls outside of there. So not a big deal. Um, I'm also going to let this bottom border bleed off. So right now there's a, a very thin border right around this left panel. I'm going to leave that for now and, uh, and go back and add the border for this top panel um, next. This is a much more dynamic, kinetic kind of panel, so I'm going to have a little bit more of a lively panel border on this, something that I see in other Rob Liefeld pages, so uh, it should fit in um, you know, with his style and, and with some of the stuff that I've seen in other pages from this issue. And to do that border, I'm going to uh, transition to my brush. So one border ruled with a rapidograph pen. This is typical of this or a marker is what I usually do to roll a straight line. Uh, in this case, you know, I went with the rapidograph and the uh, archival link. I am inking the brushwork with the Raphael 8404 size 2 and uh, this is a fairly new brush that I just started with recently so I uh, should have a pretty good pretty good point on it yet. This original page this leg is butted right against, or I should say this top panel is butted right up against this panel. I'm going to change that a little bit. I'm going to bring this bottom piece down just slightly. And the reason that I do that is to avoid a tangent there and to create a little sense of uh, overlap and depth. So this panel, like I said, the panel that I think is the really cool snake eye shot will sit above this panel just slightly, um, you know, by varying where these panel borders actually meet. Getting a pretty nice dry brush effect there. So what I would do is draw this border in while I have the dry brush happening and then uh, continue to work around the border in different spots as I add more ink to my brush and get less of a dry brush effect. And I leave a little bit of a gap in the border here where this character's foot can break that border a little bit to, again, just to continue that idea of try to make this panel as dynamic as possible as all these characters and foot soldiers are kind of bouncing off of and flying away from snake eyes. Thank you. 
All right, I just cleaned out my brush, so now I am switching to this pen nib, very similar to a Hunt 102, and uh, mostly to do Destro's, some of the metallic texture on Destro's face, but I'll also just kind of go in and start working on everything. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's it for now. Well, let's do this. I mentioned that I was going to do some motion lines um, in this panel, so I'm going to have those motion lines radiate out, of course, from snake eyes, and I'm going to do it from the middle here, um, kind of the, the chest, his chest area, the center of uh, the figure, if you will. So these are, um, what I'm putting in are uh, very common if you look at like older Marvel comics, but it's part of the superhero vernacular, I think, these kinds of lines that just radiate out from some action point or focal point. And I'm putting a couple of these in in blue line to work as a guide, and then I'll probably go back in with um, probably markers maybe to, to roll these out. You can roll these with a variety of things. Old timers would even do it with their brushes on the edge of a, of a ruler where they would raise the edge of the ruler up. I have done that mostly as a because I know that's a technique that was used, so I would experiment with it. That is not my favorite way to, to do it. It's um, very easy to have that straight edge roll down, you know, if you're propping it up, if you're holding it up with a finger or whatever and uh, not that easy. So you can also do it with rapidographs. You know, that's what I often use whenever I'm using a straight edge. And uh, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll use those. I don't use rapidographs nearly as much as I used to. And if you don't use rapidographs regularly, you have to, uh, you have to clean them out because they would definitely clog up if you're not using them frequently enough to keep that ink flowing. So most of my rapidographs I have cleaned and put away just because it's not a tool that I use enough to keep in good shape. Whenever I use them more often, I would run as many as like maybe four or five different weights. Now I just have ink in the, the, the pen that I used in the very beginning to roll this border.
think that's going to do it. Um, I will pu put the pencils and inks on screen next to each other so you can see the, uh, you know, compare the before and after. But uh, that's basically it. It's about two hours. Um, if I did not speed up the video, it would be about two hours worth of time inking this. And that's about all I have to say about it. Um, it was fun to work over Rob's pencils. And, you know, one thing I would note about his pencils is they're loose enough to allow an inker to go in and put their hand on, on, the, uh, on the final piece. You know, I think that uh, different inkers, different pencilers have different methods of working. Sometimes it really is like tracing, and I think sometimes it's much more like embellishing and, and being a finisher or adding some illustration to uh, to these pencils that are very much the structure. Um, those are my favorite kind of pencils to ink. I often see those and think they would be great to ink um, from a variety of artists, John Romita Jr., John Buscema. Um, there's just a lot of these artists, especially the older school artists who left a lot of room for their inkers to interpret and so you would see inkers that were very stylized and you would see very different combinations when different inkers hooked up with these pencilers. Um, in this case I think these pencils were uh, everything was there that you see in the inked versions and uh, like I said try to be tried to stay true to the pencils. Um, this is obviously Rob's book and people are buying this for Rob Liefeld so you want to make sure you keep as much of that flavor uh, in the finished inks as possible. And I think in the case of Rob's pencils, really he's a very dynamic uh, compositions. Those, those tend to come through, you know, whether it's figures or just the overall page layouts. So hopefully he'll be happy with this. It was a lot of fun. And uh, who knows, maybe we'll do some more cartoonist kayfabe inking videos in the near future. All right, like, follow, and subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe YouTube channel. You can hit the bell icon below this video to be notified whenever we post a new video or live stream, such as these drawing videos. You can find Ed Piscor's Red Room on his Patreon at patreon.com slash edpiscor. You can pre-order Red Room from your local comic book store now. You can also pre-order Red Room from Fanagraphics, and those links are in Ed Piscor's link tree below this video. You can join me on my Patreon at patreon.com slash jimrug where I post lots of artwork, original art, behind the scenes stuff, sketches, process. Uh, I also post out of print zines and mini comics, the latest of which is my ballpoint pen uh, notebook catalog. You can subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe E newsletter at the links below this video to keep up with everything we have going on. Looks like it's going to be a very busy 2021. That's the best way to make sure you don't miss anything. You can find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below this video as well. Until next time, you guys know what to do. Make more comics.